Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series on my channel. We are going to be doing the bottom at Christmas challenge. Now I'll tell you why I've decided to do something like this. I needed something that didn't have too much gameplay in between episodes. You know how I like to keep a, a good pace on my series going forwards. But I haven't really got the time to do that right now. So I've decided that just to do this. It might be a short 10 to 15 episode series. With, uh, we're going to start in the Premier League and I might look to do it in other leagues as well throughout the year. But a longer term save will be coming further down the line. So going back to this new series that we're starting. But my Christmas, pretty self-explanatory really. You holiday until Christmas time and then you take over whichever team is in bottom position. And as you can probably tell by what's behind us, it's Brighton. And there is the league table. Brighton have played 18 games as of the 25th of December 2018 and they have only won once drawn six times and lost 11 games with a minus 19 goal difference their solitary win came against Evan at home which was a 2-1 home win draws against mainly the competition in and around them so they're not always getting beat by the teams at the bottom of the table but of course 11 defeats is always absolutely nightmarish i haven't actually took over them yet i'm still as an unemployed manager but he is just their run of fixtures that they've had so far their only win only win came on the opening day of the season against everton every single league game since they've either drew or lost and as you can see here they've just been on an absolutely awful awful run in the Premier League and it is really going to take some turning around now in terms of Brighton themselves I'm actually quite pleased with them I think there could have been a lot worse options in terms of personnel which other teams have got I think Huddersfield would have been worse I think Cardiff might have been worse um maybe um uh, that might be the only two <laughs> So I'm going to set up my manager, get to over, and then we'll have a good look through the squad. Right, so I'm about to take over Brighton as of 25th of December. We'll click on the managerial style. I'm just going to suggest experience based on Brighton. And I think I'm going to filter to... Uh, I'll just keep it set at default. No hidden, no messing about with my stats or anything like that. We'll go in completely, completely fresh. Now, I'm not going to show you all this. This is all just... I would do the same thing for pretty much any team when I do it. But I'll tell you through, talk you through some of the first things that I will be doing once I've got through all the boring stuff. I will be looking at my staff straight away. As you can see, we've already got two spots open in terms of um, coaching staff. I have no assistant manager, so that is going to have to be fixed rather quickly. Um, our scouting, apparently we're full up on scouting, but I might try and see if our board will allow me to do more of that. Uh, we'll definitely hire a physio as well, and that's going to be my first sort of job sorting out the staffing so we can get the best out of the players that are currently at the club. Once I've sorted that out, I'll take a good look at the squad and see what sort of formation I want to play, where our strengths and where our weaknesses lie. I can immediately tell straight away that goalkeeper is probably a position we're going to have to look at in January. Now, I haven't looked at the transfer budget yet, but I'm hoping, purely because we're a Premier League club, that we might have some finances to play with. And as it turns out, we don't really. Four and a half million pounds, not a great deal left in the wage budget to play with either. And in terms of that overall balance, it is really, really quite poor. They haven't really gained any sort of money since the beginning of the season. So it might be a bit difficult. We'll have to look at outgoings as well. January transfer window was fast around the corner. Um, obviously only a week to go before that becomes an issue and we're going to have to go have a good look through the squad and see who we could potentially move on to sort of raise funds for the first 11. So going through the pre in well, the meeting of the chairman stage, they do want me to develop players using club's youth system. Now, I don't plan on being here beyond this season, so I will basically tell them whatever I damn well plays because they're not going to judge me in six months on how much I've used the club's youth system. Usually when I'm looking for staff for any club, I really don't care what nationality they are or what language they speak. But because we're not going to be here for any sort of length of time, I really, really want them to either be English or speak English. And Brian Klung has came straight up as a perfect assistant manager. Whether he would want to do that, I'm not too sure. We'll see if we can get him in on a contract. He is unsure about the job interest, um, so we'll lock that in. But we will try and just give him a bit more money than what he currently wants. That's it. 65k for the compensation and 3.5k per week on the wages. I think it's a good bit of business for Brian Klug. He's an absolutely fantastic assistant manager. If any of you are looking out for one in the first season. We do have one more spot 
to fill in terms of our coach and stuff currently before I can go back to the board and see if they will actually give me some more. Now we do have a um, couple of goalkeeping coaches which I might need to maybe sacrifice a little bit. We've got our under 23s assistant manager currently doing handling. Um, when you ask your assistant to sign, I often, I'm not too sure whether they do it correctly or not, but I don't feel like they do. I like to assign it myself. So just having a quick look through to see which we would desperately need in terms of possession and tactical. We're not really too familiar in terms of a star rating for that. So that might be somewhere I look. So maybe someone who's maybe more tactical minded coach. And again, I am going to be looking for um, a more, a more English manager, an English coach just so they can slot straight in and there's no issues in terms of having to bed in. I'm not even sure if that's how it works with staff. You know that's how it works with players, but maybe with staff it might be a bit different, but I am just looking for the English staff. So I think Glenn Snodden is the guy I'm going to go for, assistant manager at Chesterfield. He's not out of this world in terms of his attributes, but he will certainly come in and do a job for us. So some of you might be wondering why I'm focusing on staff recruitment when I've just came into a job with the team who are bottom of the table. But one of the key things you've got to remember when you are facing relegation with any side in football manager is morale is pretty much everything. You know, if you can raise morale or stop morale from lowering in any which way, you should do that. If that means pandering to your players just once or twice over the season, I would honestly, I would recommend it. You know, getting the staff in so the training's right gives them less reason to whinge. You know, just do all the basics right as you can. Maybe in some certain situations, you might be harder on them in team talks or in personal meetings. Just take a step back a second. Think, is his morale going to go down as a result of what I'm saying? And then maybe think again. So in terms of picking a formation, deciding what I want to do, you can see here in the squad depth chart, what's, this is not right. I haven't got 13 strikers. So I've had a quick look through the squad and I'm thinking this sort of formation or either taking the attack midfielder out and putting them in defensive midfield would suit our players the best from what we've got. Now we've got some people in here who are either who are just not at the club. So we'll remove them and this is sort of what we're looking at in terms of our star ratings. Our defence actually looks quite solid but we have there's already an issue I can see straight away. Shane Duffy, he's, <laughs> he's a good defender. He is a good defender. But them physicals, for me, are just not good enough. So I, I might... Well, it depends on sort of finances we get. If we get a lot of money in January somehow by selling some players, then maybe a centre-half might be looked at. But um, I might just have to deal with him. So Shane Duffy and Lewis Dunk, I think they're an OK partnership. Um, obviously, he's a lot more physically well-rounded and much more suited to the kind of football I would tend to play on Football Manager. I think in terms of defence, we're really well, well thought out of. Martin Montoya, I know he's a good right-back on this game and he's very... Um, attack minded actually he's very good with his dribbling and his crossing his physical stats are fantastic so we've got no issues whatsoever at right back and Bernardo I'm not sure who this guy is but he is a left back he's only 23 years old three and a half star current four star potential hasn't got the same sort of um, well-rounded physicals as Martin Montoya in terms of the acceleration in particular but he still looks like a really really quality left back so I think in defense minus the goalkeeper we are pretty well set and it looks like we've got some good options in the centre of midfield as well with Davy Proper. I know he is a good attacker midfielder, how well he played centre midfield, I'm not too sure. Um, maybe we'll have to incorporate a deep line playmaker in our system just to be able to get the best out of him um, going forward. I'm thinking I'll probably not play an attacker midfielder with these, with these players, you know, with Shane Duffy not being as fast as you would imagine. <laughs> I think I might have to play the defensive midfielder just there, um, just to protect the back four, I think. So we're going to ignore the attack midfield position for now. And even if I have to sign somebody in the January transfer window to play in D-mid, I will do just that. But we are going to be playing wingers, which is something I'm not really comfortable with in football manager. I always prefer wing backs, but we are going to be playing with wingers with Brighton. They have plenty of wingers available. Solly March, um, the Iraq, I know he's an Iranian international, sorry. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. I think that's just ruled him out the starting eleven, to be honest, the, his name. Anthony Notliart as well is always a fantastic technical player on Football Manager. Whether I can get the best um, sort of results out of him, I'm not sure. T Trek. Trek on the right-hand side might be interesting. Um, but you've got the likes of Jürgen Lacardi. I know he's a decent striker. He can also play on the left-hand side. I don't think he will be our starting striker. I always really like the look of Florin Andonia. He's a Romanian. I think they signed him from La Liga from Cordoba, 4 point, or Corunia, 4.1 million uh, to 5.5 million for Brighton. 
and I think he's probably going to be the starting striker for us, pressing forward as a lone striker. Um, oh, we'll have to have a look at that. We'll maybe see if I could maybe change things around there. Jose is Cuerdo. He is a very, very fast player, um, which I definitely like. And I think, I think between our wingers, I think I would rather have. Um, I'm not sure about Solly March. He probably is just a backup. Anthony Nokia on the right hand side, and is Cuerdo on the left. Now, one thing I don't really do on Football Manager is set me team up tactically, defensively. I just don't think it suits out any any team. Even if you are the worst team in the league, I don't think it suits you to go and play defensively. I just think it's you're better off just trying to go for games. You might get smashed 4 5 nil because of it, but you're more than likely going to pick up more points than if you didn't do it. So in terms of our starting eleven, Dale Stevens can play in at defensive midfield, so we'll stick him in there. Um, in terms of our central midfielders, is it going to be Gross and Davy Cropper? Davy Cropper? <laughs> Davy Popper? Proper? Jesus. So you can just ignore the um, player roles for now. I will mess with them once I sort of start figuring out what exactly I want from particularly me attacking players. You know, midfield and defence will probably just sort itself depending on what people prefer to play. Um, but particularly these attacking positions you've got to get the balance right so with Martin Montoya he is an attacking player and with Anthony Nogliot uh, playing on that right hand side who is an attacking player as well I'm thinking I am going to keep him as a wing back on that right hand side and maybe it might be an excuse for us to focus our player down there now we have all seen Shane Duffy's um, pace so I'm going to make him a stopper at centre half and with that in mind we are going to make should we make him a ball playing defender um, I kind of want to cover in centre half, so Dunk will be the cover and Duffy will be the stopper. And of course, we've always got that defensive midfielder in there who I, I don't want her to be an anchor man, which is what I would usually play. Um, obviously, with our centre half pushing out, I don't want him sitting in that exact same hole as Duffy would be. So I'm thinking we'll play a ball winning midfielder on defend, it means he will sit a little bit deeper, but he will happily move further forward in in chance of winning the ball and if the ball is played in behind him in that space that he leaves maybe Duffy might come out and stop that player. In terms of Bernardo as a left back I think I'm just going to leave him on full back on support for now and um, that might change going further down the line. Gross what do we do with you mate? He's not very physical he's not going to be bombing up and down the pitch maybe a deep lying uh, deep lying playmaker would work okay there if maybe Stevens pushes up, maybe he's just holding in the centre of midfield. Um, proper, I'm going to have to make him someone who is actively trying to get up the pitch. So maybe a Metzala. Um, maybe a Metzala on attack. We could do that. So obviously with a Metzala, they like to drift out wide or in little pockets of space. Sort of in here. Which kind of means maybe I want uh, not only to vacate that space for proper coming in. Um, I did think maybe a trick. So if I wanted to try the Trek Bautista on this right hand side, I think we would have to switch Gross and Proper around. Obviously a Trek doesn't really do much defending. They don't track back very often and with Montoya pushing on as well, um, we might might be better suited to have the Metzala on the left hand side of central midfield just to be able to cover down this part, uh, part with the ball winning midfielder should Montoya and Nokiaard go missing on that right hand side. So I think I, I think I am going to try knocking out as a Trek artist on the right hand side. It's not something I've really tried before, so I think it's worth trying. I do want Isquedo as a inside forward. It's just the best role for his stats. And then for Andoni, in terms of um, the attacking positions we've got behind him, I, I am going to try the pressing forward. I'm not sure if this will work. Um, he will put pressure on the defensive line, but whether that means he's out of position when it comes to an attacking sense, maybe so. It might be something we have to review further down the line so I think this is actually our best 11 and, and their best roles going forward so in terms of the tactic and mentality I'm not going to go in on anything just yet I'm going to stick with balanced in terms of our approach player we do have some PSC players up in the attacking third so I am going to pass it into space particularly as Anthony Nokia will be looking for the gaps in space to be able to exploit I don't think shooting on sight or hitting early crosses will be any good for us i think with the pressing forward with the inside forward on the trek i think working the ball into the box will be um the best use of how we play in terms of our passing directness i'm just going to leave that on standard for now i might lower that to um a shorter pass and play if i'm fine and we're not really keeping possession in the final third maybe there isn't enough support there and i just need to slow the tempo down and on that note i am going to actually stick the tempo onto a little bit lower um we're not going to be 
a counter attack and fast break inside. We might need to slowly build up the player. Um, but I do want us to sort of have the impetus and to be on the front foot at the same time. I think everything else right for right now. Do we play for, no, we don't play for set pieces. Come on. We are going to focus the player down the right though. I think Mark Montoya and Anthony Notyard can hopefully um, do some damage down there. In terms of in transition, what are we going to do here? Are we going to counter press counter? Um, I think we'll probably do. I, I just find it, it's worked best for me when I've done that. I'm not going to give any instructions to me goalkeeper in terms of where he should be distributing. Um, obviously, we've got the deep line playmaker here. Should he distribute to him? I don't know. We'll just leave that blank for now. I'm not going to do too much in terms of, um, you know, too many team instructions. I'd rather keep it quite simple and see how we get on. In terms of our defensive line and our uh, line of engagement, we are going to push that up just slightly. We're not going to play the offside trap because we do have Lewis Dunk. Um, as a cover and centre half, so we'd probably end up playing half the people on anyway. Now, with defensive width, we'll just keep that standard as well. So, in terms of the individual player instructions, we are on Martin Montoya as our right back. Um, I think I'm happy with everything pretty much as standard, but I don't want him to shoot. Um, I don't think that's pretty. I don't think that's his best. Um, crossing from deep or crossing from byline, we'll see a byline. I'd rather he didn't cross that much, to be honest. Um, and Donny as a pressing forward, he might be in the box, he might not. Maybe far post is Cuerdo coming in off that left-hand side. It might be the best bet in terms of his crosses. And we'll leave it at that. In terms of Bernardo on the other side. Do I want him to get further forward? I think I do. I just want him to, I, just, I just like my wing-backs getting forward. I can't I can't help myself. I want him to shoot less often. Um, and I think... Does he aim for the near far post? I don't think he does. Um, I think I should him to cross less often. If he can find the pass to... Um, is queered or to take over from i think that would be better use of his time not the art will probably end up sitting deep maybe sitting on the edge of the box rather than going in for the attack and threat dl stevens in a defensive midfield i really want him to be able to keep the ball a little bit better i don't want us to be losing uh, possession in um to, in a defensive midfield position so i've got him on shorter passing to hopefully mean he won't give possession away too much i think should i have him as mark tighter I think I will. I'll have him as Mark Tighter for now. That might be something I'll later take off if he's just out of position too much due to Mark and different players. Um, I don't want um, Pascal Gross dribbling in the centre of midfield. I don't want him. Run. I think he he could do a shorter passing as well. We'll keep his pressing intensity to the same as it was as standard proper as our Metzala is obviously getting further forward and getting wider. Um, dribbling, I don't mind. Don't want him to shoot. I'm not going to tell him not to. So we'll leave it at that. Is Cuedo on the left-hand side? Don't want him sitting narrow or no. I don't want him sitting narrower. But I don't want him to stay wide either. We'll just keep that as it is. Shoot less often, we'll leave. Um, pressing intensity. Nah, we'll leave We'll leave his Cuedo as he is. In terms of knocking the art as our trek. Um, I don't mind him shooting. If he is to cross, I think he needs to cross the far post and cross from the byline. Or should he cross from deep? Should he cross from deep? Mark Montoya overlap. I've I'm going to leave that. I just don't know. I can't make decisions for myself. And then Andonia as our striker. We are just going to leave this at pretty much the same. We'll keep him a shorter passing as well. Can't imagine too many um, long passes are going to be available for to him that far up the pitch. So that is our tactic developed so far. Obviously this is going to massively change over the course of 10 episodes or so. Um, but hopefully it might be something that we can get some results out of obviously Brighton are in a really really poor position bottom of the league on nine points one win all season it's going to be a big task we've got nine uh, 20 games to go in this season which is 10 episodes or two games per episode which I think is pretty much what how this series is going to go except from today where today's first game will be against Tottenham Hotspur and that's the only game we're going to play today just due to all the setup that has been going on Obviously, I'll keep you updated as anything goes on live. Um, we've got our staff to come in. We're still on the first day in which we took over. and um, We don't play Spurs till tomorrow. Um, Spurs, how are they doing in the league so far this season? They're in seventh, so they're not smashing the league. But they are a good 20 points ahead of us in terms of the points they have picked up. So it's going to be a difficult game away from home. Let's get into it. So we are here. It is game day. There has been a couple of little developments going on. There was three players currently unhappy in the squad. And I've spoken to them all. One of them was Andonia. He wanted a first-time football. So he's going to get that. He's going to be my starting striker. So I offered him them assurances. 
Um, there was two players who wanted first team football, which I wasn't willing to offer them. So Matthias and who was the other one? I really can't remember. Oh, it was um, Leon Balognon. Bal Balogun? Whatever. Um, he wants to leave the club as well. They are both transfer listed by request now. Um, getting two bad eggs out of the cart will be fine and dandy by me. So this is how we're going to start today's game. Matthew Ryan is the better goalkeeper of the two bad ones we've got. Mark Montoya is fit and will start at right back. Um, Lewis Dunk and Shane Duffy will be our starting centre-back pair. And with Bernardo, is he fit? Doesn't look like he's fit. He's not. Maybe we can start getting Bong there. What can do, he's nice and fit. We will start uh, DL Stevens in at defensive midfield. Uh, Gross was our deep line playmaker and proper will be our Metzala in the centre of midfield. In terms of the right, this is all going to, if Anthony Notyard isn't performing, that is going to have to change and we'll probably end up looking at starting Solly Marsh on the right hand side maybe. But uh, is quite, Matthew Ryan's on international duty. How can I be so blind? David Button's going to start in goal then. And up front we are going to start an Donia. In terms of the bench, we'll let our, we haven't got an assistant manager actually, so we'll let our, um, Head of Youth Development, pick our uh, midfield, our midfield, our substitutes. Bissoma is a decent one. Yeah, we'll do, we, we can deal with that. So let's get into this match against Tottenham Hotspur. So Spurs come on us with a 4-2-3-1 wide formation. We all know Spurs. Doesn't look like they've made any major signings um, in the football manager land. Standard first limb for them. Obviously, incredibly, incredibly talented uh, group starting 11. If we are to get anything from this game, even if we are just to avoid a drubbing, That'll do for me. The boys have reacted absolutely brilliantly to my first um, team talk. So we are actually going to keep it in 3D cam for this series. Just something a little bit different. Um, somebody had commented on one of the previous seasons that they prefer that. I personally prefer the 2D view, but I don't mind actually using it every now and then. And I might, I might, I might come round to it. I don't really use it that often. Not a lot happening in the first 20 minutes or so, which is absolutely fine by me. We will shout at our players and demand more just to see if that could give them a kick up the jacksey. It does look like Spurs are dominating the game in terms of possession and chances created, but absolutely nothing um, highlight worthy so far. 40 minutes in, us on balance. I think I might actually go on a cautious mentality now at this point. Might be a little bit too late as Lamella plays in the corner. Vertonghen's there. Great save by Button and it's cleared by Montoya. And Andonia is now away with it. Can he get past his man? He can't. Trippier gives away a foul. And that is going to be the end of that highlight. Another highlight just before half time. Another corner for Spurs that goes over the bar. And that is going to be it for the first half. Spurs are definitely dominating the match. No doubt about that. But... Um, our boys are holding out and that'll do for me. So we kick off the second half, this time us shooting left to right. I hate this camera angle. I don't even know which one I want to use. We're going to keep it from here. I like to see a more aerial view on the sideline camera. Just to be able to see the positioning of our players and see how they are actually marking players and if any opposition instructions are actually being paid attention to. So having a look at our first 11, is Quedo's not having much joy on that left-hand side. We do have Solly March on the bench who can easily come in and play the inside forward role on that left-hand side. So we'll get him on 670 minutes. Then we're not we're not conceding. We're not conceding. That's all I want. Um, full-back and keeper both playing well in defence. This might be the worst opening game of any series I've ever produced. But David Button is keeping us in it. And I will take a nil-nil all day long. Five minutes to go. We will make another couple of substitutions. With David proper struggling out there. We'll get Basoma in in the centre of midfield. And Anthony Nottingart. We will get off for Jürgen Lokardia. Uh, we'll make him a winger and we'll change that round and we'll see if we can hold out now for the final four minutes. This will be an absolutely fantastic initial point as we get a highlight. 89 minutes in. Danny Rose to Ericsson to Deli Ali to Harry Keaton. Please, please get it. Oh, what a challenge that is. And Solly March can come away with it. Where's your space? Oh, you didn't look for the pass, but Andonia's in the box. Andonia. You had the chance. You could have been the hero. You could have justified me picking you over. I can't even remember who the other guy is. But um, Glenn Murray. <laughs> Glenn Murray just isn't fast enough for me. And the corner is wasted. There's three minutes of added time. Listen, lads, just don't concede. And I'm more than happy with that. Five seconds to go. This will be the final highlight of the game. And there we are. Opening day draw away from home against Tottenham. Hotspur is off. Oh, see what I mean? This is the problem with the low morale. Why? Why have you reacted every look switch off? I think we'll just 
Negative reaction. Everybody thought we'd get beaten today. Well done for proving them wrong. Great result. Uh, negative. Negative reaction. Oh, this squad might be a little bit trickier than I did think. I need me assistant manager in so he can handle the press conferences. But there we are. Open and dear. First game of the of our reign, nil nil away from home against Spurs. Next episode, we'll be looking at Fulham and West Ham. Um, we are still in actually all the cup competitions. We've got Manchester City in the League Cup semis during the January transfer period. Now, I don't know how I want to do the January. Do I want to do it how I usually do it? Um, I don't know. We'll just see how it all falls. But anyway, if you've enjoyed the episode, please consider leaving a like. And if you're looking forward to the rest of the series, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, Take it easy.